Singapore is a small island smack right in the middle of Southeast Asia and it is filled with treasures. What treasures, you ask? Well, let me show you! I am Bargo MJ. I'm currently at the McRitchie Treetop Walk and I'm going to bring you on an adventure all the way up here, ascending through the different layers of the forest to find some treasures hidden within them! The forest at McRitchie is part of the Central Catchment Nature Reserve of Singapore and like most rainforests, this forest can be structured in four layers. The forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. The forest floor is the darkest of all forest layers and anything that falls from above will end up here and decay quickly. Just like this log here. For the leaves, Fruits and even dead animals can be found here, providing an important food source for both scavengers and decomposers. Scavengers are animals that consume other dead animals. One of the scavengers that you can find here is the monitor lizard. Even though it does actively hunt for its own food, whenever there is a dead carcass around, it means free food for the monitor lizard. It will happily tear the carcass into smaller pieces and consume what they need. After which, if there are any more pieces of carrions left, they will be further broken down by decomposers such as ants, termites, worms, fungi, millipedes and more. There's some sort of fungi growing all over this log. Can you see these whitish parts? Yeah! Fungi are very special living organisms. Although commonly thought of as a plant, fungi are a whole kingdom of living things by themselves. There's fungi growing over at the log there as well. Sometimes, you'll be able to find insects and other animals eating these fungi. Decomposers are important to the ecosystem because not only do they remove the harmful rotting matter from the environment, they themselves often form the very foundation of the food web. These animals break down the decaying material into nutrients which will be released back into the forest floor. With the abundance of food on the forest floor, animals such as the wild boars thrive, foraging for seeds, tubers and young plants. Other animals, such as the centipedes, can also feed on the decomposers. Centipedes are predatory animals that can inject venom through their bites and they typically feed on decomposers such as earthworms, insects and sometimes even a rat. One of the top hunters around here, believe it or not, is the chicken. Or more accurately, the red jungle fowl. They will dig up anything from earthworms to insects and have a good meal. There's a troop of long-tailed macaques behind me. Long-tailed macaques are fully adapted to live in the rainforest. They can be found anywhere from the forest floor here to the canopy layer foraging for food. These playful monkeys rely on their versatile hands and long tails to balance themselves on the trees. Sometimes, we see them use those nimble fingers to pick parasites off of each other, keeping themselves healthy and having a little snack at the same time. Sadly, because of how irresponsible we humans can be, sometimes the animals here can come across trash that was improperly discarded, especially things like food containers or wrappers. Not only is it unsightly, it also makes the animal think, hey, plastic containers means food, and they can get aggressive whenever they see one next time. So please remember to throw your rubbish properly if you were to come out for your own little treasure hunt. One of the key features of a tropical rainforest is the fact that this area receives a lot of rain. The rainwater has to go somewhere, so they usually form freshwater streams like this, which will flow into a nearby reservoir, which will eventually exit into the sea. There are many animals that call freshwater streams like this their home. I'm hearing a frog call somewhere. There! There it is! This is a really beautiful frog that has a large copper-coloured patch at its eardrum, making it look as though it has copper cheeks. Freshwater streams are important because many animals use these water bodies to lay their eggs. Oh wow, look! That damselfly that had just mated is descending into the water to lay eggs. Can you guys spot this spider-looking thing seemingly walking on the surface of the water? These are not spiders, but are insects known as water striders. They are able to walk on water because their legs are covered in thousands of microscopic hairs that are water resistant and can trap air to keep the water striders buoyant on the water surface. Bye bye, water striders! Let's go that way. Moving away from the freshwater stream, we are heading one step above the ground level the understory. The understory layer of the rainforest is made up of young trees, short species of trees, shrubs and soft stem plants. Every forest's understory looks different because of the different mix of plants. 
even understory from different parts of the same forest can look wildly different. This layer is generally shadier, warmer and more humid than the canopy layer, which means plants that love such conditions thrive here. These plants, in turn, provide food and shelter to the wildlife living in this layer. Insects, birds and even mammals, all of which love to eat fruits and flowers, thrive here. There's a cute plantain squirrel loafing right there. Squirrels also often find nesting materials in the understory, especially fibrous bark like these to build their nests. There are more than just plantain squirrels here. Scavenging around the understory layer is another really cute squirrel, the slender squirrel. Squirrels are rodents that spend a large part of their waking hours looking for food. This slender squirrel is looking for insects or spiders hiding amongst the dried leaves. The understory is also where you can find snakes such as the Waggles Pit Viper as well. What you are looking at right now is a juvenile female. When they mature, they develop this beautiful golden coloration with black stripes and can grow up to about a meter long. Males, on the other hand, usually stay small and retain their green coloration. These vipers are ambush predators, so they make use of their incredible camouflage and sit extremely still like this, even for days and wait for a prey to appear. Moving up, we will be looking at the canopy layer. The canopy is like the umbrella of the rainforest. They stretch outwards, covering as much space as possible to capture the most amount of sunlight for the trees. This results in the shadier conditions found towards the forest floor. The canopy can also provide food to the animals living here. This is a fruiting palm tree and we can see birds and other wildlife taking turns to visit it. Hey look! A pair of common flameback woodpeckers! These woodpeckers search for food all the way from the canopy above to the tree trunks right below it. Oh, you guys hear that? Well, of course, being in the canopy layer, you're going to find a lot of birds here. Right behind me is a chestnut-bellied mokoha. This uncommon resident bird is a member of the cuckoo family, which birds like the Asian quail is part of. This clumsy bird forages for food in the canopy layer of the forest and is the only species of Malkoha still thriving in Singapore's forest. Oh wow! Look at the Kolugo hanging there! Kolugos use the height of the trees here to glide through the canopy, moving from one tree to another tree easily. That usually happens at night and in the daytime, they are just resting around like this. Right above me is the green crested lizard. Smaller lizards like the green crested lizard like to hang out in both the understory and canopy layers of the rainforest. I've even spotted one sleeping high up in the trees at night before. There's a yellow striped tree skink over there. It's quite rare. The yellow striped tree skink belongs to a family of lizards called skinks and can be found throughout the layers of the rainforest. Our outfits match. And of course, with prey animals like the lizards around, you can also find snakes. Tree snakes, like the paradise tree snake, hang out in this layer, not only because of the prey they can find here, but they are also a lot safer from their own predators. With that, we're here at the treetop walk. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I can't wait to go in. At the top of the forest! We are finally at the McRitchie treetop walk and we can look at the rainforest from a whole different perspective. Can you see the crown of the trees above the canopy layer? This is known as the emergent layer. The emergent layer is the top layer of a rainforest. It is made up of the tallest trees in the forest. Because of this extra height and without the denseness of the canopy layer, this layer is often really windy. Only animals that can balance well, even in strong wind, can be found in this layer. Here is where you can also find one of the top predators of our rainforest, the raptors of our skies, aka the birds of prey. 
Wow, this is such an amazing view and we managed to spot so many wildlife along the way. Well kids, as our exciting journey comes to an end, let's take a moment to cherish the precious treasures we've discovered today. Our incredible wildlife. From the hungry ones to the sleepy ones, from the ones that live on the floor to the ones that soar in the sky, each of these treasures from Mother Nature herself plays an important role in the world. Together, they form a complex world that would otherwise be pretty flat. Remember to do our part and take care of nature so that we can continue to enjoy all these treasures around us. That is all for today's episode of Wildlife Treasure Hunt. Join me next time for more adventures! <laughs>